You guys can go ahead and be seated. Um, you'll notice things are a little bit different today than they normally are, um, but don't worry, that'll become normal soon. Um, it's intentional. And uh, I'm going to unpack why that is today. So um, today we are not continuing. Go ahead, you can go to the next um, today, we're not continuing the Base Camp series. <laughs> I normally start every message with today, we're continuing or starting. Um, but today, we're not continuing uh, the Base Camp series. And I'm ho- my hope is today that this feels less like uh, a sermon and more like we're sitting together in my living room having a conversation. So I do have a message and, and we're going to talk, but... Really, I want to unpack some things today that the Lord's been showing me the last couple of weeks. The most dangerous thing um, for you guys is when I get a week off, Um, (laughs) because then I just get a time to just spend time with the Lord and ask Him what He wants to do. And so um, today, I just want to be obedient to what He's asked me to do. Um, It's going to be pretty raw, Um, just so you know. I'm going to give you some things that are um, new and fresh and that we're still kind of walking out what that's going to look like, but um, I just want to go after what the Lord has for us and um, see where He leads us. And so the title of the message this morning is Back to the Living Room. Uh, Let me pray and then uh, we'll get into uh, the Word this morning. Lord, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you this morning. God, we say, come and do whatever you want to do. Lord, I pray that uh, you would give me the words to say this morning, Lord, and that that I would be obedient to what you've called me to do um, this morning, Lord. And I just pray that um, your will would be done and that you would be glorified, you would be lifted up, Lord, and that Um, This would be a place that you can do what you want to do without um, us getting in your way. And so, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you this morning. And we just say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. 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 There you go. So I want to start by um, saying that the word repentance is not a bad word. Um, a, a lot of times we have this idea that, and, and a lot of it, it started in the Reformation um, well, before that, but it really popularized itself, especially in our country and in the, in, in the Reformation with John Edwards and those guys that I think really took the word repentance and made it something that it's not. They wrote books like Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. (laughs) Um, God's not angry. And so today, um, on behalf of our church, what I want us to do, the word repent means to think differently, to change the way you think, to change the way that you do things. And so in a way, what I'm doing today is repenting before the Lord. Um, Not that we've done anything bad. I don't think we've done anything bad. But the Lord has spoken very clearly a direction to me that he wants to take us. And I want us to be obedient to that as a church together. So uh, I'm not only doing this for me, but on behalf of all of us. And I'm inviting you to come along with us because we're going in a direction that I think is going to be really powerful. um, And I'm really excited to see what the Lord does. And things are going to be a little different around here. (laughs) So does that sound good? A little scary, maybe. Hopefully not. It's all good. But I've got three points. I'm kind of structured like a sermon, but really this is more of a talk this morning. Point number one, this is God's church. Amen. Y'all just, we're getting right after it. Y'all just buckle up. It's going to be maybe a little bit bumpy this morning. Um, and I'm going to share some things that I didn't think I'd ever share from the platform. Um, but here we are. Uh, earlier this year, 
I had a meeting with our oversight pastor, Pastor John Pignatelli, and we were sitting around chatting and, and talking about the church and what we, you know, it's what we've seen God do and all the things that we were doing and everything. And uh, then he asked me a question that kind of stopped me in my tracks a little bit um, because I thought I knew the answer. And he asked me, he said, he said, do you know yet, has the Lord showed you yet what the identity of your church is? And so I said, yeah, of course he has. And I started unpacking all these cool things that I thought that the Lord had said that our identity was. And if you ever get a chance to spend one-on-one time with Pastor John, you'll, you'll, you'll know um, this, what I'm about to tell you. But he just looked at me and smiled. And I knew when he smiled that I had it wrong. You know that feeling? Like, you don't have to say it. It was just like a bless your heart type of smile. Like, like. And he told me, he said, he said, all that's really good and you should do all of that. He said, but I don't think that's the answer to the question that I'm asking you. He said, he said, but don't rush it. He said, the Lord will reveal that to you when it's time. And he said, and you're going to know when God shows it to you. And I was like, okay, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of forgot about that after a week or two, because you get in the, the routine of doing things and Um, Those kind of moments, if we're not careful, we can miss them and the importance of them. And so time went on, and a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from a friend of mine. He's a pastor of a church out in Red Oak. He's on my accountability board. So um, if you didn't know this, we have um, our church. So we're uh, we're an autonomous local church. We're not uh, not governed by anyone outside of ourselves, Um, but I have an accountability board meaning that if I ever did something like what you've seen on the news, there are three pastors that have the legal ability to fire me. Um, and, and it takes that out of our elders' control. So what has to happen is our elders have to pray about it so it's not political within the church. So our elders would have to meet and talk about it and then call these guys. And, there, and there's three pastors um, that, that are um, friends of mine that are much older and wiser and have been doing this um, combined for about 60 years. Um, and so these guys, and so Pastor John is the head of that. And then uh, Chris Fagans is one of, was one of my uh, mentors, and he's a pastor of a church in Red Oak called Believer City Church. And I think at some time, so uh, Pastor Chris, we got to do a little swap ski on a Sunday. Uh, you come here, I'll go there. Um, so, but anyway, he's, he's amazing. I actually want to be here when he comes, so maybe we won't do that. He's <laughs> But, but he, he's like my big brother. He's, he's really become like that to me over the last couple of years. And he called me because his church, they found out, and they're, um, they average about 130, 140 on a Sunday. And then when they have an event like we're having today, they had like 225 show up a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning. Oh, wow. um, so th- they've, been, they've been to church for about 10 years. And so they've just, it's a decent, what I'm telling you, is they found out um, in October... <laughs> that the landlord of their building wants to turn that into a restaurant. And the, and the landlord said, we've got this really cool building behind you that's way better for a church and we'll pay for all the construction. Um, but you got to move and be in there by January 1st. It took us six months to get a permit to remodel a bathroom. You know what I mean? We had to delay opening our church by over six months because the city is so fun to work with getting permits done. And so they found out in October, like the second week of October, that they have less than 90 days. And this is not like a minor remodel. Like it's not currently functional to be a church. Like there's, um, when we initially looked at it, it's going to be about a quarter million dollars worth of work. Um, we're going to do it a lot cheaper than that. I'm going to help him do some of the stuff over there. But um, anyway, so I was out there. He called me to come look at this building. He was like, dude, we got to move. I don't know what to do. Can you help me? And I was like, of course, I'll come help you. Like, I'm, I'll be there. Like, how's tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock sound? So I got there at 1030 because that's how I roll. And uh, he, he knows. Yeah, he knows. And so I called him and I was like, I'm on my way. 
And he was like, I know, I'll, I'm here all day. <laughs> so, uh, and we got out there, we, we looted all the stuff in the church, and then uh, we were sitting in his office afterwards, just kind of chit-chatting about stuff. And, and he asked me a question, and he said, do your people think that Resonance is their church or God's church? And I said, well, I like to think they think it's God's church. I sure hope so. (laughs) And then we talked about a bunch of other stuff, and I went home. And that night, this was on, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday a couple weeks ago, um, and that night, I was, I was having a prayer time with the Lord late. Um, Ashley and I had a conversation about some things, and, and um, nothing bad, but we were just I was talking about just some things that I was kind of working through, just emotionally, stuff like that. You know, it's been, this has been a challenging season um, for us, and so we were just having an honest conversation, and uh, she went to bed, and I was like, well, I got to finish up a few things for, um, so I was working on something for, I think, a client I was doing some work for, and um, I finished that up, and right about the time I was ready to go to bed, the Lord just kind of stopped me and goes, what about you? What do you think? Is Resonance your church or my church? And I was like, well, I'd love to think it's your church. <laughs> I was like, but I sure find myself working really hard sometimes thinking that it's mine. And I said, but Lord, it's yours. You can do whatever you want to do with it. And then we proceeded to have about a three-hour meeting at midnight. And I just started writing stuff down in, in, the, in an app on my iPad. I just started writing it down. And I got done with it, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff. It's like three in the morning, and I have like all these things the Lord has been speaking to me. And so after he asked me this, this, is it your church or my church? The next question he asked me is, he goes, well, if it's mine, would you like to know what I think about it? (laughs) And I was like, not really. (laughs) And in the kindest way possible, he began to show me some things that, we can do differently and who he's called us to be. Amen. And so that's what I want to share with you today. Amen. So let me give you some context. Um, I often hear from friends of mine, including uh, pastors of much bigger churches, that they say, man, y'all stuff looks awesome. They're like, we wish we had half the tech team that your church has. And I was like, no, you don't. We got like three people. <laughs> I was like, we don't have enough guys to run your cameras. But what they say to me is, is they say, you guys are like a miniature megachurch. And I thought that was a compliment. Wow. Listen, it's not inherently bad. I don't, I don't think big churches are bad. Uh, my formative years in ministry came through a megachurch. Um, I have a lot of respect for, for big churches. Um, I did my ministry training through a school attached to um, one of the biggest churches in America. But I think the Lord wants to do something different with us. You see, we can, we can organize a really great church service, and we do. We can sing four songs real good, We can have a really cool bumper video, and I can preach a really good TED Talk. (laughs) But I don't want to get stuck in doing things the way we do them just because that's how we do them. You see, what starts as vision can become tradition quick. And so what happens is the Lord gives us a vision... And we get really excited, and then we say, like, that's awesome, Lord, I'm going to go do that. And then we start to go do that. 
and then we put our head down and, and we're plowing. When you're plowing a field, you don't have a lot of time to stop and get a drink of tea or something, right? Like I'm just, you're just hard charging forward with, with what the Lord told you to do. But listen to what, what Jesus says. This is a passage of scripture that's so twisted out of context most of the time. I'm gonna take out the part that's troublesome. We'll deal with that another time. But the second half of Matthew 16, 18 says, upon this rock, Jesus is talking about himself, not Peter. I will build my church. And the powers of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, if this is going to be his church, then he gets to call all the shots. Amen. Yeah, that's right. and, and, and what I'm telling you is that it's not a bad thing. You see, when God's a name-changing God. Yeah. Abraham, Abram becomes Abraham. Jacob becomes Israel. Hosea becomes Joshua before he leads the Israelites into the promised land. Simon becomes Peter. Saul becomes Paul. You see, God changes a name as a signifier of a calling. It says, you used to be Abram, but now you're the father of many nations. We're not changing the name of the church, so don't... <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm wearing a shirt that says resonance. We're not changing the name of the shirt. The church. More about this in a little bit. You like that? Yeah. So we're not changing the name of the church, but we are stepping into a new season. Amen. And so we're in a season right now that started about a week ago of evaluating everything that we do and making sure that it aligns with God's vision. Yeah. And so we've had, um, I've been very, very, very selective. I've only had a, there are only like three people who know any of this, so don't feel bad if you don't know. <laughs> but I've started having tiny little meetings about just drop, no one's, no one's heard all of this yet. Um, but I've like, hey, we're going to do this a little bit differently this week. Hey, we're going to do this a little bit differently this week. The worship team, like we did things a little differently this morning, intentionally. And I'm super excited. I'm going to unpack in the next couple, the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to unpack um, what that's going to look like. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have all the answers. But I have a commitment <laughs> that we're going to follow Jesus wherever he leads us in this next season. Does that sound good to y'all? Yeah. All right. So point number two slash point number one slash I don't know what number point it is, is prioritize his presence. Uh, when, I was, when I was writing down notes the other night, um, I wrote down real big, prioritize his presence and underlined it. And then I wrote underneath it in all capital letters, that's it. Nothing else matters. Uh, I don't talk a lot, especially publicly, um, about the beginning of how our church started. Um, for a while, I thought that was, was a good thing. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain some of it here in a minute. You'll understand why. Um, but I think it's an important part of who we are as a church. Origins matter. Yes. That's why movies do origin stories. <laughs> yeah. You got to know about Bruce Wayne being in the cave to understand why he's Batman. Or the well. But the initial group that, that started this church, uh, we were part of another church for, that, that was about three years old. And this church had just celebrated its three-year anniversary. And on Easter Sunday, 2022, we found ourselves in the midst of a scandal. Uh, I'll spare you the details this morning, but our pastor at the time found himself in a situation that would fit alongside of pretty much everything you've read in the news the last couple of months. 
Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Yeah. And I was the number two guy at the church. Uh, we didn't have an, I wasn't an executive pastor, but I was a pastor on staff and I had been there since the beginning and, and I had kind of become the, you know, the, the whatever, functionally executive pastor. And so it fell on me when, when, this, when this came out, when, when it became undeniable, um, there was a, an audio recording of him confessing to all the stuff that had happened. And so when I heard that, and it was undeniable that this, because at first I'd given the benefit of the doubt, and I was like, well, I, I know this. I know this person. They would never do this. It became absolutely undeniable what had happened. And it fell on me and my shoulders to reach out to our oversight pastor. And, and when I reached out to our oversight pastor, I found out that he wasn't actually our oversight pastor. And then I tried to find copies of our bylaws. Um, just so you guys know, all of our elders have a copy of our bylaws. And bylaws are legally binding. And our church is a 501c3 for a very specific reason. Because if you're not a 501c3, then a person owns it. If you are a 501c3, all church, this whole thing about like churches or 501c3s of the devil and all that, that's dumb. Um, there's no truth in that. Um, 501c3s, all that real, every, every church is a 501c3, whether you're recognized by the government or not. 501c3 is a categorization the government applies to all churches. So every church is a 501c3, whether you've been recognized by the government or not. But once you get recognized by the government as a 501c3, what happens is the church becomes a standalone entity. Nobody owns it. Actually, y'all own it. If you give to the church, you own the church. That's how, our, that's how we define membership, as someone who supports the church. So if you support this church, um, then you're an owner of the church. Um, I don't own it. And I can be removed. <laughs> it's, it takes a process, but it can be done. And so we found out in the other church that that wasn't the case. And so we called our oversight pastor and said, hey, this is like, you, this is, everything that we thought was not true is true here. And um, he instructed our pastor to resign and said, you need to step down and take a season out of ministry, uh, potentially forever. Um, that lasted for about a year, just um, yeah, if that. And so what happened is we found out the, the next morning um, the locks on the building of the church had been changed. Passwords to all of, our, all of our stuff had been changed overnight. And so we were locked out. I was still on staff at the church at the time. And so we had a decision to make. And so we met with a group of about 25 people or so in a living room and said, what do y'all want to do? Said, we can't get into the church building. The sky's disappeared. All the money's gone. The building's gone. Everything's gone. And they said, well, the church isn't a building. We're going to stay at church. And so the core group of us, um, I, well, one, one last thing I want to say that I have in my notes here is um, we initially created a Facebook group and the, the first name of our church, it wasn't really the name of the church, but the name of that group, we called it Church in the Wilderness. Because we were a group of people that we didn't know where we were going. We just said, Lord, wherever you lead, we're going to follow if that means we all go find new churches, cool. If we start a new church, we'll start a new church. And so the next Sunday, um, I agreed to lead a service in Pastor Dane's living room. And I said, let's just meet this coming weekend. Let's just see what the Lord says and what he does, and, and we'll go from there. Uh, we didn't have a sound system. We didn't have a pro presenter. Like It was just a group of people in a living room chasing after the Lord. 
And it was beautiful. You see, we found ourselves navigating pain and loss and frustration and anger. But the presence of the Lord met us in the living room. Um, I, I want to read a, a, a short passage, but I want to give you some context before I do. And the context is that um, David had died and Solomon had built the temple and it had taken him seven years to build the temple and then the temple sat empty for 11 months before they go to move the ark from what they called the city of David, which is where the tabernacle was, into the temple that had been prepared. This is the same temple that would be standing when Jesus walked the earth later. And so they bring the ark of the covenant from the city of David and they bring it into the holy of holies. And, and the, it's the priests are carrying the press. The job of a priest is to carry the presence of the Lord. By the way, every one of you is a priest. Um, so your, your responsibility is to carry the Lord's presence. And so the priests carry the Lord's presence and they, they set the ark down in the Holy of Holies and the cherubim, the gold statue cherubim, like move and cover the ark. And then it says the presence of the Lord filled the temple. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10, the Bible says, when the priests came out of the holy place, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord. You see, you can do all of the right things. We can get the lights just right. I dimmed the house lights by 5% this week. Just feels better, at least to me. You can sing all the right notes and teach all the right messages. But without his presence, church is nothing more than a Sunday morning TED Talk. And TED Talks are awesome. I love TED Talks. They make me feel good. My favorite one's by Simon Sinek. It's called Start With Why. It was before TED Talks were even cool, from like 2008. But if all we do is three steps to be a better person, look what, look what Solomon, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, Ecclesiastes 1.14, I observed everything going on under the sun, and really, it's all meaningless, <laughs> like chasing the wind. Let me know when you catch it. And I'm not saying, like, we're not going like, to shut all the lights off and get rid of the PA. We're not doing all that. I'm not going full Francis Chan, <laughs> if y'all know that. Francis Chan was a pastor of Simi Valley Church in California, like huge mega church. And then like one Sunday he was like, we're done. And they like moved out into the, like they set up a sound system in like the park next to the church. And it was like, they had church outside in the park for like a couple of years. And then he like moved to China. Um, he's back now. He's good. But <laughs> not, we're not going there. Those things aren't bad. Lights and sound systems and all that. It's not bad. But I want to see God move. I want to see people set free. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. I want to see lives changed. I want to see people made alive in Christ. Um, by the way, what I'm really describing to you is revival. That's what revival means. It's in our vision statement, y'all. It starts out to see people. I actually dropped the end of it this week. We're done with the rest of it. We're going to start with just this. From now on, our, our vision is to see people made alive in Christ. Next week, we're reading Ezekiel 37, so y'all can get excited for that. It's going to be a good time. Dry bones. Live. But that's what revival means. It means to see dead things come alive. So how do we prioritize his presence? Well, Psalms chapter 22, verse 3 says, You are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Uh, the old KJV says that God inhabits the praises of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. And so some people say, I haven't heard it in our church, and if you have, 
Um, forgive me for what I'm about to say, but some people say, well, I just didn't get anything out of worship today. Good. We weren't worshiping you. It's not about you. And the fact that you think it is means you have a problem. Worship is about the Lord. Worship isn't about getting something. It's about giving something. We pray every week before church in, in this room right here at 945. If you want to come be a part of it, you can. We pray every Sunday morning at 945 before, the church, before church. And I almost always pray. Nathan started doing it some weeks, takes it from me, which is cool. I don't care who prays as long as somebody does. But we pray every week, Lord, we invite your presence into this place. Because if you don't show up, nothing's going to happen. And you see, God doesn't inhabit a building. He shows up where he's revered. Uh, Solomon uh, wrote Ecclesiastes, and he writes 12, 11 full chapters of how meaningless everything else is. And then he sums it up in one sentence. This is the man that the Bible says was the wisest man who ever lived. That when the Lord said, you can ask me for anything, he said, Lord, I want wisdom. And the Lord said, since you asked for that, I'm going to give you more than you'll ever, like I'm, going to, I'm just going to pour it on you. Amen. And so the wisest man who ever lived, that, that God says, this is the wisest human that's ever lived, this is how he summarizes everything. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God, obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. Amen. Listen, people get hung up on, this, on the idea of the fear of the Lord. Uh, like it's something to be scared of. But the fear of the Lord is a beautiful thing. It means to revere him. To be in awe of him. Listen, if we have an accurate picture of God, uh, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, um, the Bible says that the earth is his footstool. If we were to get an accurate picture of who he really is, reverence is the natural response. How arrogant would it be to come into his presence and have any other response than, God, I'm not worthy to even be in your presence right now. You're the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord, the stuff that bothers me, like the, it says like dust in the wind. Yes. Here today, gone tomorrow. And so I've met with Pastor Dane and, and Nathan and Taylor, and, and I've told them that going forward, we're going to create some margin in worship for the Lord to do what he wants to do. We're going to create some margin for reverence. Uh, we want to honor the Lord and prioritize His presence. And so what that's looked like up till now is we have a worship time, and then there's intermission. I'm here every week, y'all, I know. <laughs> it's time to go get coffee and whatever while there's an announcement video playing, and then and then, and then we're going to come back and listen to the Word. Uh, but it's all the same thing. Yeah. See, worship isn't to get your heart ready for the Lord. Like, that's not what worship is for. That's a byproduct of, like, when He shows up, like, that's just what happens when He shows up is He brings His presence, He brings His peace, and suddenly all the things that are bothering us don't matter because we're in the presence of the King of Kings. Amen. But it's not about getting your heart ready to receive the word. It might be shifting our attention off of our problems and onto him, which has the byproduct of getting our hearts ready to hear the word. And so what we're doing right now, what we've started, um, we started it last week and it was epic failure. Um, <laughs> but we'll get better. Is we're actually destructuring our services. 
We want to create space for worship and, and for reverence of the Lord. Uh, we want to eliminate unnecessary interruptions. And so you won't see any more announcements in the middle of service. I've got some ideas on how we can communicate those things to you. We're going to start by doing them at the end of service, but um, I have this awesome software that I can text all of you anytime, and so we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll let you know what's going on, uh, but it's not going to happen in between worship and the Word. And we're going to allow the Lord to lead wherever He wants us to go. And it might be clunky. I'm just warning you. <laughs> it might be a little rocky at times. But I'd rather be clunky while prioritizing his presence than polished while prioritizing our own agenda. Amen. Uh, don't worry. Um, I don't do weird. I don't think the Lord does either. Uh, the Lord's not weird. The Holy Spirit's not weird. Some people are weird. And that's okay. He likes weird people too. Um, but that doesn't mean like we're not like pulling out snakes and stuff. If you pull out a snake, it'll be a dead snake real fast. Snakes are the devil. It says it in the Bible. <laughs> the only good snake is a dead snake. I'm going to crush its heel with a nine millimeter. <laughs> I don't do snakes. That would not ever be a funny joke, by the way. I'm a member of a group called the Pistol Packing Preachers. <laughs> snakes, snakes are evil. You got to take care of the evil one. Uh, I say that, and then like after I say the word snake like 47 times, that's all that's in my Facebook feed for like a week, and I'm like, I can't even open it. Y'all, yeah. you're welcome if that's you. Sorry. But we're going to get very intentional about creating space for the Lord uh, to do whatever he wants to do. Amen? Amen? All right, point number three, who we are. Who we are. <sighs> I need a drink of water. You all with me so far? Are we, are we good? Y'all yeah. still love me? Yes. You see, I think sometimes we think of church as as a building or a certain meeting place or time, like, well, I got to go to church this Sunday. Uh, but the church isn't a building. Right. It's a community. Right. Um, I actually love, and, and the passage I'm going to read here in a second, um, this section in the New Living Translation is actually titled, The Believers Form a Community. Uh, and so if you want to go read it later, you can read the entire passage here. It's Acts chapter 2. Verse 42 through 47, this is what basically everyone considers the birth of the church. And so I talk a lot about the law of first mention, which basically means the first time God introduces something, it defines the pattern for that thing. And so this is what the Bible says about the church when the church was formed. Acts chapter 2 verse 46 says, they worshiped together at the temple each day. We don't have to come every day. Once a week's fine. Um, <laughs> They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Amen. We're about to break bread together after yeah. church today. Yeah. All while praising God, enjoying the goodwill of all the people, and each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Amen. Uh, at the beginning of 2024, I don't think I ever even shared this publicly with everybody. I shared it with our team, and it was written on my whiteboard in the office for like six months. Um, but the Lord, the word the Lord gave our church for this year was community in January. I wrote it on my whiteboard right before January 1st, and it was back in the back room. If you ever saw it, just back to the word community real big on the whiteboard, that's what it meant. That was our word for this year. Um, and, and so we started doing some things to promote community within the church. Some of them have worked really well. Some of them have not. That's okay. We're going to pivot and adjust. But I'm, I'm letting you know because this is, this is the direction I feel like the Lord has called us into. And how would you know if I don't ever tell you? 
And so one of the things we started in January was Family Sunday. Welcome to Family Sunday. That's what we're doing today. Uh, <laughs> um, if you didn't know, I'm going to tell you, you can get involved with Family Sunday. Um, Family Sunday is not designed or intended to be the church feeding everybody. That's fine. We, if nobody volunteers, we will do it. Like, we'll cook hot dogs and brisket and I'll misplan my time and spend till 1 a.m. cooking because I didn't start early enough. Like, that's fine. Like, we'll do that. Uh, it's not required to be involved with Family Sunday, but it's, I want to invite you to be involved. Yeah. And so it's always the third Sunday of the month. Communion and Family Sunday are always on the same day. The third Sunday of every month is Family Sunday. So if you want to get involved with that, uh, let Brandy know, hey, I want to bring something next month for Family Sunday. Um, We're doing like chili next month. White chicken chili and regular chili. Yeah, white chicken chili and regular chili. So like cornbread, whatever goes, I don't know, whatever goes with chili, not beans. Um, But whatever goes with chili. (laughs) You can have... You can have chili and beans. You just can't have chili with beans. That's not chili anymore. Um, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Uh, so we have Family Sunday. That was designed to serve the word community. That, that, that was, that's, that's one thing that we're doing to promote community. The second is connect groups. Um, we this week made the decision to consolidate down to one connect group. So... I don't want to like, I'm not mad at anybody, but like we haven't had a lot of participation in that. And that's okay. That just means that we don't have the right location, date, or time. Um, so when that group grows, um, we have like, there's like 16 people in that group. I'm totally willing to split that group again into two groups. So if, if there's enough, if there's enough willingness and, and want to participate, um, we need someone to host it though. So we tried doing one at Nathan and Taylor's place in Roanoke and I get it. Roanoke's a long way away. Um, so if somebody who lives closer wants to host a group, they would be happy to lead it. So all you have to do is open your home. So I'm just putting it out there. We would love to have a second group again. Um, but it, the, the Roanoke thing just, just didn't really work. We don't want to do them here. I want them to be not here. Um, so, but we'll, we, if that group grows enough, we'll totally split into more groups. Um, we got five weeks left starting this week, so we got time. So, but no pressure. We can, we'll, we'll have the one group and it'll be awesome. Uh, the, the third thing that we started was, we call it Family Fun Night. Um, and that's been a bust. I'm just being honest, it has. Um, we had one month, we had like six of us that were here. <laughs> and we had, like, it just, it just has, hasn't gone well. So we tried different nights. So I'm okay with that. If, if that's not something that we want to do, um, what I'm telling you is like, we need your input. Yeah. Like if we're doing stuff that isn't, something you want to do or something that's not interesting to you, just tell us. Or like, hey, I'd love to do that, but Friday nights are hard. Hey, let's do it on Sunday. Let's do it on Saturday. Let's do Saturday morning. I don't care. Like, we'll, we'll pivot and do whatever works for the most people. Um, but the idea behind those is to promote time for us to get together and just hang out, yeah. just to fellowship, just to spend time, not me lecturing you or teaching you or any of that, but just to get together and let me beat you in Uno. I lost three times in a row last time. <laughs> yeah, we had a round. Of, we've, we we had a round of Uno last time that went an hour and fifty minutes, one round. Because Jeff and Becky are mean to each other in Uno. <laughs> I think all Jeff had were draw fours that night. Uh, but those are the things that we've started to do. Um, to, to promote this idea of community. And so if, if any of those, like, like I said, I'm not, I'm not married to any of them. If, if family fun night doesn't sound very fun to you, we can quit doing that and do something different. We can do it on Saturday morning, and I don't know, I, we'll figure something out. But so I, I'm gonna, I've kind of tasked a couple of people um, with kind of asking y'all, because I can't ask everybody. So, um, but give some feedback to us. Let us know. Like, hey, I'd love to do that, but like, these nights are out, but this night would be good, Let me, you know, and we'll, we'll work with it. Um, if playing board games isn't fun, we'll find something else to do. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like, I'm open. But, but I want to be intentional about creating times for us to connect as a family that isn't always on Sunday morning. All right. Last part. 
And this is probably my favorite part. So I've shared um, quite a few times about where the name of our church came from. Um, our, the name of our church came from a meeting that first week I told you about. So when, when I found out that everything had gone sideways at the church we were part of, um, I called Pastor John, and I called Pastor John very specifically. Um, I could have called a number of people. Uh, but Pastor John had walked through a very similar situation in his church. Uh, and I had been a part of that church and had experienced some of the pain of what it meant to serve under a leader who was um, not qualified to be in leadership. And fortunately, we got out of that church before everything hit the fan. But about a year after we left, um, there was a massive scandal in that church. Um, the pastor of that church um, got caught in, a, in an affair and basically told the elders, like, uh, I'm not resigning and I'm not going to break up with this lady and I'm going to get a divorce. Yeah. And so they had to forcibly remove him. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And they're part of a network of churches, and so they had some support come in from their, from their network. Um, and Pastor John was an elder at the church, and they spent about a year looking for a pastor. And the Lord just kept saying, well, John, it's you. <laughs> and he was like, it's not me. Um, <laughs> but, he, but he had been through that, and so I called him up, and we went and had coffee, me, him, and, and Ashley, we had coffee. And, and while we were having coffee, Ashley said about three times in this meeting, well, she said it at least three times, because on the third time she said, we just want to be in tune with where the Lord's taking us. And so I've shared this before. I pulled out my phone while she's talking, and I text Pastor Dane. I just said, Resonance Church, send. And then he just sent back, K. Okay. <laughs> Which means, that's the best idea ever. That's awesome. I love it. Let's do that. That's what K means, if you ever get that from Pastor Dane. Um, but you might have seen on our website or social media um, bumper videos that we play that we have tune in, kind of, kind of in our tagline of the church. And... As the Lord does, He often tells us things before He tells us things. I mean, he usually, usually when the Lord tells you something, He goes, hey, remember that thing I told you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, yeah, you should, you should do that. Yeah. And so He does that, that often. And the last time Pastor Dane preached was September 1st. Um, and so this was the week leading up to that is when, when this conversation happens. This would have been late August. And so Pastor Dane was preaching a message that we call an off-topic message. Um, off-topic, which I have struggled with the connotation of that, because it doesn't mean we're like off-topic. Uh, it just means we're not part of a series. And so typically I preach in series. And is that whatever the plural, plural of series I'm going to trust the Latin major. So she, said, she said I can do series, <laughs> so I'm going to go with it. Um, but I wrote it three different ways in my notes and then changed it, and I just landed on spelling it series and saying series. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, I typically preach in series, and, <laughs> and the last time Pastor Dane preached... I was like, man, I really hate these graphics that I made for this series. I'm going to change them. And so I, I redid the graphics for the, the off-topic series, and I had this like, really cool idea to do it like a, like a top-secret stamp on like a classified you know, folder. And so I'm creating all this, and then I have like off-topic with like the stamp, and I'm like, something's missing. Series is already full. Dang it. I was wrong. Series is, is the word. Uh, and so I, 
the Lord kind of dropped this phrase into my heart uh, when I was doing this, and I didn't really, I didn't really understand the full gravity of it. Um, but if you go out in our lobby on the wall, you'll see, hear, believe, obey. Uh, we want to hear what the Lord says, believe what he says is true, and then do what he says. Uh, and, and that's something that my pastor used to say. And I think it's an excellent model for following Jesus. Yes. In fact, I think that is discipleship summed up. We want to hear what the Lord says, believe what he says is true, and then do what he says. But as I was working on it, don't put this slide up yet. You'll see in a second. They get a little, they get a little antsy sometimes because I say things before I say them. Um, it's, it's, it's not them, it's me. <laughs> but as I was working on those graphics, the Lord gave me this phrase. It said, tune in, trust God, walk it out. Amen. And I just thought it was a cool way to say, hear, believe, obey. Here, tune in, trust God, believe, walk it out, obey. And I was like, that's pretty clever, Buster. You did a good job. <laughs> and I put it on the graphics. And then we use those graphics. And I was like, that really sucks that I wasted that on a series graphic thing because that's way cooler than just like being on a little series graphic thing. And I was like, whatever. I, was like, I don't even get to preach off-topic messages. And so last week, when I was walking through this, this whole time with the Lord, the Lord said, no, 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 that's not a tagline for a series that you do six times a year. That's who you are. Amen. That's who I've called you to be. People that tune in to what the Lord has to say. People that trust God and people that walk it out every day. I'm going to put it up. And so we want to be people that, that tune in. And, and so I've, I've created these belief statements. These are kind of um, affirmation statements, if you will, of, of what we believe. So tune in. God still speaks today and we can hear his voice. We will adjust our lives to be in tune with his heart. This is going to be on the wall out there next week. So just, just so you know. Uh, trust God. God's word never fails. We can trust him completely because he's always working for our good. Walk it out. Every day we desire to walk in step with God's will for our lives, living out the purpose to which he has called us. Amen. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I used to say when people would ask me like, you know, well, like, Tell me about resonance. Like, tell me, tell me what resonance church is. And I would say, well, we're kind of like if Gateway and Bethel had a baby. <laughs> like, I, I, I came from Gateway, and, and I love Gateway. I love, um, love the teaching that, that I received there over the years, and, and it's just kind of baked into my DNA. Um, but I've always felt like I wanted more. <laughs> um, and I, and I love what Bethel does, but then they get like, we're not doing, I'm not into grave soaking and all that. It's weird and not biblical. Um, so I've kind of said, like, we're kind of in between those things. But the Lord really showed me, He said, like, just, you don't have to define yourself by other people. Like, you are who I called you to be. I called you to be people that, that tune in. You see, we want. We want to hear God, but we also want to adjust our lives to what God says. If we just hear the word and don't do it, <laughs> the Bible talks about that, those kind of people. Uh, we want to believe. We want to, we want to trust God. We want, to, we want to learn to trust Him and, and know that we can and have confidence that we can because we know that He cares for us. We want to obey God, not out of compulsion, um, but because we know that God has a purpose to which he's called us, and we want to walk daily in accordance with his will. Um, is Ashley in, out there still? Can you send her in here real quick?
Uh, so if you're a if you're a member, a regular attendee, um, when she come on now, is she coming? Oh, is she and the kids? Are you? No, take it off. <laughs> her jacket, not her clothes. Uh, so if you're a regular attendee here at the church, if, or if you're a, a teenager that serves, which basically is three of y'all, um, you're good. Um, I made some shirts this week. And on the front, they've got our logo on the chest pocket. And you have to move all your hair on the back and show on the back. Now turn around? Yeah. And so they say, tune in, trust God, walk it out. Um, if, if I don't have your shirt size and you want one, and I, Daniela, you, you've got one coming. He'll be here. <laughs> I'll try to get it by Friday. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, but we've got those for you today um, oh, cool. for free. Yeah, I just decided and just bought them. So they're all already paid for. Um, so they're free today um, for all of you. And if you want one um, and you don't attend, I can get you one. Just let me know and I'll let you know how much they are. We can, we can get you one. Um, but I want you to wear these out. When people ask you like, hey, what is Resonance Church? We're people that tune in, trust God, and walk it out. Amen. We're people that we, we, we want to tune into what the Lord says. We want to believe what he's called us to do. And we want to live that out every day. Um, I ordered, I've got 500 little refrigerator magnets coming next week that you'll, we'll have them for trunk or treat um, that have this on them. And so you, well, you can take some of those home and pass them out to your friends, put them on your refrigerator, stick them on cars at the gas station. Um, <laughs> put them right by the door handle. Uh, but there's, there's a personal application for this, uh, but there's also a, an application for our church. And so I said that, that I normally preach in series. Is, Series is, 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 is. Um, but I'm going to be shifting out of that for a little while. Uh, I wrote in my notes for a bit, and then I wrote dot, 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 maybe forever. I don't know. I just know that the Lord is giving, I have a whole... I have a whole note thing full of messages the Lord's given me that I haven't been able to preach because I've been so tied to teaching in series. I'm going to keep saying series. Y'all have to just deal with it. It's already in there. I can't, I can't, it doesn't, series, I tried. It's going to be series or series. Um, uh, but when I was praying a couple weeks ago, I, I saw the picture of like a cake. And the Lord said, he said, a series is, is like a cake. It's baked in advance. And then you serve it over a, over a couple of weeks. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, the Lord can speak through series. Now I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> but I feel the Lord is pulling us in another direction. If we're going to be people that truly tune into his voice, it starts with me. And so here's my commitment to you, that every time we gather, we're going to have a fresh word from the Lord. Uh, there might be a couple of messages that take a couple parts to get through, um, we might even do a series or two. I don't know. Uh, we're not going all the way to the wild, wild west. But we're going to create some room for the Lord to move and for the Lord to do what He wants to do. And as a community, we're going to learn to tune in, trust God, and walk it out together. And so this is God's church. He can do whatever he wants to do with it. He can close the doors tomorrow if he wants to. 
We're going to follow his lead. We're going to prioritize his presence. Not chasing perfection, but we're creating space for him to move and do what he wants to do. And we're going to learn to embrace our identity as a community. Breaking bread, fellowship, trying new things and adjusting if they don't work. We're going to be a lot quicker to adjust things. And we're going to tune into what the Lord is saying. We're going to trust God because we know that he's working for our good. And we're going to walk it out together. I'm excited about where the Lord's taking us. I've been fired up for like a week and a half. (laughs) And I had to sit at small group last week and be like, "Hmm, can't say anything. The week before that at small group, I was designing the shirt (laughs) and sending artwork to the printer who makes our shirts. But I'm excited about where the Lord's taking us. And I want to invite you to join me back in the living room. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's it. I'm done. You can pray.